Everyone always asks us uh, how you remember all the steps, how you remember all the moves with, with the revolve and everything and there's so much information and we always say the same thing, there's one person in our family who knows every single person's move, every single lyric of the, of the show and she's the person who helps us and tells us exactly where you need to go, when you need to move there, which lyric you need to move on, what dance step you're doing at the time, who passes you and she is here, she is our associate choreographer, Miss Stephanie Clement. <laughs> Every move, every move. The, uh, the gentleman who wrote the book, everyone knows the story of, of Lynn Manuel going on vacation and reading, reading the book. Uh, and the man, the gentleman who wrote the book, is here. Yes. If you haven't bought it, buy the book, it's fantastic. We all have it. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ron Chernow. The gentleman who uh, designed this fantastic set that we are on uh, and who lit this fantastic show, uh, David Corrins and designer Howell Binkley. They're in New York, they're not here, but we'd like to send them our love and our thank you. The sound designer, everyone always says how fantastic the show sounds. It's down to this man, Mr. Nevin Steinberg. <laughs> I shouldn't forget uh, the gentleman whose theatre we are in right now. I don't know where he is, I'm not quite sure where he is, but uh, we love him. He has spent all of his time, all of his love, all of his passion on trying to put this whole thing together, and he deserves a huge debt of thanks from us. Mr. Cameron McIntosh. <laughs> The gentleman, who, the gentleman who designed all of these extraordinary clothes that we get to wear every night, uh, Mr. Paul Taswell. Now, the musical supervisor, the man who put this whole thing together musically, the co-arranger, um, orchestrator, resident genius here in our family, the one and only Mr. Alex Lackamore. Yeah. Standing over every, oh, the whole production is a director, of course. And uh, <laughs> is it his mother or is? It? <laughs> um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna introduce him because I know he's gonna talk and he likes to talk. So, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Thomas Kale. <laughs> like midnight, right? Sit down, guys. Uh, I like that Giles is also good at that, as if the show wasn't annoying enough. It's like, okay, oh, you can also host perfectly. Um, so, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna be brief because I want to let this cast transform once again into people that tear the night apart. Uh, but I am my heart is full tonight, and this company and this group up here and all the people that you don't see have reminded me again of what is possible. And the the energy coursing through this theater, the transfer between you and them is singular, and it was tonight and it was for you, and it was for them. And that's something that we will all have, the reminder of what it means to sit in the dark next to someone you've never met, or someone that you love, and see what happens when you gather around and you hear a story. So, the simplicity of that moves me, and this group uh, stuns me. There are producers um, from, from back home, Oscar uses from the Public Theater, where we started, Jill Furman, Sandra Jacobs, and Jeffrey Seller, for all <laughs> You know, when you have a shy composer, it's hard to get him to stand at the center of the stage. And so I said, just tonight, if you would let me regale you. And I said, <laughs> can you let me have this? Um, and I was, I was walking around this incredible city this morning, the city which has inspired us and energized us over these last couple months as we made the show. And, and I was thinking of all of the things that I could possibly say about Lynn, and, and all I know is we all have access to the same alphabet, and so we can all make the same words, but I don't quite know how he does what he does. And if you want to see two hours and 34 minutes to prove it, and then throw in the fact that we also all have the same notes, and yet if you put them in this order, something like this is possible, something that allows people like all of us to feel accessed and to feel useful and to feel like we have utility because without them, who are we and what are we? To be around work that reminds you that at its core, what it's telling you is you are not alone. And the notion that it starts with a scribble on a page a very long time ago from this middle-aged man. <laughs> he was young when he started, but I mean, let's go. And, and there he is, sitting across the aisle from me, and it doesn't feel all that long ago that it was 2002, and we started a very long conversation that just never stopped. So, I think it's very well time to bring out this, uh, this young upstart, who knows how far he'll go. Please give it up for Mr. Lynn Manuel. <laughs> So I'll never forget tonight as long as I live. Um, uh, a couple of things I, I want to say. Um, there, there's been a lot of press about the show. Um, and and I, I've read the word uh, overnight, uh, overnight success a lot of times, and I want to dissuade that immediately. Um, because um, every single person on this stage has waited for so long for this moment to share this show with you. This cast was cast a year ago. Um, and, and before that, uh, even before that moment when they were cast in this show, uh, they were working their hearts out in school. And there was a moment when some teacher or some parent said to them, you can do this. There are sensible career options, but you could do this <laughs> if you have the chance. So I am in awe of this incredible company who made miracles happen to perform for you today. when Cameron McIntosh came to see Hamilton at the public. 
uh, and uh, he came up and had a drink with Jeffrey Seller afterwards, uh, and he, you know, my first show was Les Miserables in New York. Um, and so to, to meet that man and, and, and have him tell me that he wanted to bring Hamilton over here is the realization of a dream come true. Somewhere a seven-year-old inside me is freaking out. Um, so thank you, Cameron McIntosh, and congratulations on your gorgeous theater. Before that, uh, in 2008, I went on vacation with my uh, now wife, then girlfriend, and I grabbed uh, Ron Chernow's biography off a shelf at Borders in Columbus Circle. Remember Borders? They were great. Um, all I knew about the subject of the book was that he was the dude on the $10 bill and died in a duel, um, and I wanted a book to read on vacation, and I was transported. And even before that, flashback to Ron Chernow doing years of research on this man and reading the pages aloud to his wife, Valerie. Thank you, Ron, for this incredible story. <laughs> and now we're gonna flash back, I'm back to 2002, where I meet Tommy Kale in the basement of the drama bookshop, and he has 10 ideas for every one of mine, and he is much smarter than me, and I go, oh, okay, I'm gonna hang out with this guy because he's gonna make my work better, and that conversation started in 2002, still happens every day. That's Tommy Kale, our director. <laughs> Rewind a little further to November 11th, 1769. <laughs> this is the first letter we have of Alexander Hamilton, and he's writing to his friend Ned Stevens. And he is a clerk, he is 13 years old, and he wants to get the hell out of Nevis, and he has no idea how, and this is the letter he sends to his friend. To confess my weakness, Ned, and my ambition is prevalent that I condemn the groveling and condition of a clerk or the like to which my fortune condemns me and would willingly risk my life though not my character, to exalt my station. I'm confident, Ned, that my youth excludes me from any hopes of immediate preferment, nor do I desire it, but I mean to prepare the way for futurity. I'm no philosopher, you see, and may be justly said to build castles in the air. My folly makes me ashamed, and I beg you'll conceal it. Yet, Neddy, we have seen such schemes successful when the projector is constant. I don't ever want to hear the words overnight success <laughs> associated with this show. Uh, Alexander Hamilton never made it to Europe, which he loved, and he never made it to London, which he desired. He, he, he was in awe of Europe and, and what occurred here, and he learned so much from it, but he never left the continental United States once he made his way from Nevis. And yet here we are in London, uh, premiering Hamilton in the West End. I am so grateful, I am so overwhelmed, and a lot of people made miracles happen for us to stand here tonight, and I'm grateful to all of them. Thank you so much. I'll see you at the party.